Good evening and good morning for worldwide uh, attendees. Okay, welcome to this section two. Well, I'm glad to chair this uh, session. In this session, you can see we have four speakers. Okay. Uh, the first speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Ninten from India Corporation. Ninten Lee is the vice president of technology of uh, India Corporation. He has been with uh, India since 1986. Prior to joining India, he was with uh, Morton Chemical and the SCM. He has more than 30 years of experience in the development of fluxes and uh, sold material for SMT industry. He received his PhD in polymer science from University of Aklun in 1981 and the Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from National Taiwan University in 1973. Okay, now uh, let's welcome Dr. Ninten. Good afternoon, uh, folks. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the low temperature solder. Uh, this is a many a material which is uh, uh, particularly uh, emphasized on the outstanding for the draft shock performance and also for the, the many for the mobile device. Yeah. Uh, the low temperature solder, there's quite several drivers uh, for low temperature solder. Uh, number one is the thermal wattage because of those industry is going to miniaturization and that causes too much of those wattage and the yield is highly reduced. Uh, uh, number two is uh, uh, reducing the cost because of the low temperature. You don't need to have, have a very good thermal stability, so that helps. Number three is uh, some components not uh, tolerant to the temperature, therefore need lower temperature to to allow the uh, effective functioning of that components. And also, of course, when you have a low temperature, you don't have as much of thermal damage during the whole process. Therefore, you get a, a better long-term reliability. The last one is uh, the low temperature actually allow hierarchy assembly of the devices. This is particularly important for the complicated device you needed, such as for 5G, uh, smartphone, those kind of applications needed. So this uh, basically is a major driver so far we can see about for industry to adopt the low temperature. <laughs> uh, when you talk about low temperature, the most commonly used low temperature solder in the industry is a bismuth tin solder with melting temperature around 140 degrees C. Uh, so that is very convenient, which is low temperature indeed. Uh, but this, this solder, that's one major constraint it is fairly brittle uh, on the solder material itself. Therefore, when you make the solder joint on the portable device, uh, this device is very short life. Uh, this is the one test data showing you about uh, when you have this uh, uh, many different type of alloy from the solder joint on the portable device. Uh, the bottom, the bottom, there's a several of the combinations you have a. Uh, the red uh, diamond shape of the data point. That is the, all those combination of the alloy, uh, they fail in the first drop. Uh, that means uh, they cannot even survive one drop. Uh, all those are the in, uh, bismuth containing solder. Uh, whether it is uh, the bismuth tin solder and the solder paste or the B BGA with bismuth tin solder or both. As soon as you have one side containing the low temperature bismuth tin solder, uh, you don't survive the, the, the shock of the portable device on the draft. So this basically is showing about, yeah, bismuth tin solder is low temperature, but it doesn't quite fit for the portable device application. Here's the one of those uh, rupture surface, uh, how that looks. Uh, this is when both the solder paste and the BGA bore uh, was made of the bismuth tin solder. Uh, you can see uh, if it's a reflow at a low temperature, uh, it ruptured uh, at the interface uh, with a both IMC uh, uh, exposed, which is a copper tin, 
and also Bismuth tin solder. Uh, so uh, both of them uh, show up at the rupture surface, indicating the Bismuth tin uh, solder is about as brittle as a copper tin intermetallics. Uh, there's another another condition is uh, the bismuth tin uh, solder uh, with the both phase and the BGA. Uh, it was assembled at higher temperature. Uh, this got a similar results. Uh, the solder joint rupture surface uh, showed both uh, copper tin and the bismuth tin. So this is basically showing about, uh, yeah, bismuth tin solder is good, but it uh, doesn't survive well on the on the drop failure. Uh, this is uh, one of those uh, applications uh, we have uh, uh, observed about industry when moving into this uh, 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 complicated uh, device, uh, such as uh, uh, smartphone, uh, like the 5G application. Uh, this is uh, uh, one application where you have a flip chip assembled onto the substrate and then this substrate is further assembled onto the connector, which is then connecting several other board together. Uh, so actually this is a stack of the several different board together that allows the different parts to put together and the several different module or the antenna to put together onto the one uh, device. Uh, over here you can see the flip chip, uh, often it's using the sex solder, and that is on the field uh, followed by the the module is assembled onto the connector or the board, and in order to av avoid the remelt of those uh, free chip solder join, the assembly of the module onto the connector uh, or the board uh, uh, need to have a low temperature to avoid the remelt or even softening of the of the free chip solder join. Uh, so this makes the, the low temperature solder very critical. And whatever the process temperature for this low temperature solder, uh, it should not uh, allow the, the sex solder in the flip chip to be softened because even when you don't melt, but just soften, you can still have a, the solder extrusion happening. So that is definitely not desired. So this is the one thing about low temperature solder. You should not uh, uh, be processed allow at a temperature which allows the sac to be softened. That means it prefer to be around 210 or even less than 210 degrees C at a different temperature. There's another kind of design on this hierarchy design is uh, uh, in order to allow some of the even higher durability, sometimes the molding is to be introduced to protect the low temperature solder joint, uh, give a higher durability for that. And if the low, the, the molding is introduced to, to protect the low temperature solder, the low temperature solder should survive the molding process. And the typical molding temperature is around 165 to maybe 170 degrees C. So that means the low temperature solder, it should be higher in the melting temperature at the molding uh, temperature, like 165, 170 degrees C. So it is a, a solder material which needs to be processed, reflowed at uh, below 210 degrees C, but you need to have a, a melting temperature above something like 180 degrees C to avoid the solder uh, have a softening at the molding temperature. So that basically is the, the feature desired for this low temperature we are talking about. So based on that discussion, we can have a several feature desired layout over here. Uh, the first on the application, uh, this need to have a, a good enough of the shock resistance that need to match roughly at least the sex order on the uh, uh, shock resistance, and uh, also uh, the temperature need to be high enough uh, to resist the molding temperature, but uh, low enough not to melt the sex solder. Uh, so melting temperature of the solder, uh, the low temperature, uh, need to be uh, above 180 degrees C, but zero temperature need to be below 210 degrees C. 
Uh, is there any other which is adequate for this? Uh, uh, yes, there's a new R developer on this, which is the name as a dual fuse, uh, no time you saw the, we'll see more details. Yeah. Over here, this is a dual fuse, uh, sort of R. This is actually, uh, sort of paste, which is a mixture of the two different sort of powder. One is, uh, low temperature solder, uh, another one is higher melting temperature solder. Uh, the low temperature solder, such as uh, tin indium silver, uh, which has a melting temperature around 175 to 185 degrees C. Uh, the high temperature solder, such as the sack solder, maybe, maybe around 217 degrees C. Uh, so the mixture of these two solder powder can be made into solder paste. When you assemble the, the, the portable device uh, at the drain flow, the low temperature solder will melt first, uh, become the, the solder matrix, liquid solder matrix. And uh, the high temperature sack solder powder will be dispersed in that liquid solder, uh, low temperature matrix. So once you have all the low no melting solder uh, well molten, uh, then the solder joint can be cooled down and then solidify into the final solder joint. In this final solder joint, uh, is uh, expect to still have some of those high temperature solder powder still remain uh, in the in the solder joint. Part of the high temperature solder, such as said, may have dissolved already in the in the in the solder solder matrix. But a part of that is still remain in the matrix. And this is the example showing you about um, when you have this kind of dual fuse uh, solder, <coughs> after melting uh, reflow process, uh, the right hand side you can see you have some of those uh, dark area. Uh, dark area is a sack solder. Uh, the, the lighter area is the one containing indium. Uh, indium is a lighter in the color for this uh, elemental mapping. Uh, so this show us about there are some of those uh, sex other powder still remain dispersed within this uh, indium containing matrix in the system. And uh, this uh, sex other actually is the one uh, not only that can provide the more reinforcement on the body strength, but also it can also provide uh, some of those uh, resistance against the higher temperatures, uh, surface temperature, uh, such as the molten temperature. Uh, this is a one example uh, based on showing you about solder paste with mixed powder. On the left hand side, uh, you see the, the solder uh, with the tin indium silver powder uh, plus the sack solder. It, this solder will melt start around 155 degrees C and the complete melting uh, around 205 degrees C. Uh, this is a visible containing the sex solder. So this is when the solder paste was the um, first reflow. After it's a reflow, and then go through the several, uh, two more of the reflow, and uh, that means the solder bump uh, is uh, remelt again. Uh, when remelt, uh, the starting melting temperature is uh, getting higher than 155, that's about 190 degrees C. It still end up with 205 degrees C. And uh, in the third the, uh, reflow, again, uh, it is still around 190 degrees C on the melting and still end up with uh, 205 degrees C. So this is uh, the dual fuse the solder with a specially uh, formulated powder mixture solder paste. How that behave on the thermal behavior? So let's look into the mechanical property. Uh, this is uh, looking to the, the shear strength of the solder. At a different uh, testing temperature, uh, the testing temperature will we, we start from room temperature to up to 165 degrees C, which is uh, the expected uh, uh, molding compound molding temperature. Yeah. So, if it is a sex solder, you can see with the increasing temperature, the strength getting lower. But uh, even at 165 degrees C. It still have a very reasonable strength uh, exist for this uh, sex 305. So sex 305 is uh, is good enough to survive the molding, but it does not support the hierarchy design because if you use that for the assembly for the module, 
it will cause the BG, uh, the, the flip chip uh, start to join remelt again. So SEC is okay, but cannot be used for the low temperature. If we're talking about the bismuth tin solder, uh, yeah, that is low temperature. The, uh, this it will not uh, causing the uh, free chip solder joint to remelt. But this uh, bismuth tin solder, it melt at 140 degrees C. Certainly, it will also melt at the molten temperature at 165 degrees C. So this doesn't fit. And uh, how about we talk about uh, a tin indium um, a silver solder, which is, is uh, with 20% indium, this 2.8% uh, silver, which is melting a temperature around 175 to 185 degrees C. This one, the strength is weaker than the sex real fight. Uh, at 165 degrees C, the molten temperature, even though this uh, solder is uh, still solid, the melting temperature is at higher, uh, above 175, but uh, the strength is already fairly low. At 165 degrees C, it cannot register the strength. So this uh, tin indium silver doesn't fit as a uh, low temperature solder for this uh, uh, hierarchy design. On the dual fuse, which is a mixed powder approach, uh, uh, this one has uh, quite a, a decent strength. And the uh, most important thing is uh, even at 165 degrees C, uh, there's still about uh, 12 to 13 megapascal strength. Uh, that is uh, strong enough to survive the molding uh, process and can prevent the, the salt extrusion. So therefore, this is a uh, one good choice from the design consideration about uh, the drift of this will prevent the sex solder to, re, uh, to have a solder extrusion. And uh, also the molding temperature for this uh, array will not cause in the remelt or the solder extrusion for this low temperature solder itself. So now we look into the solder material property and uh, also solder uh, uh, reliability. Uh, this is uh, what we have tested as uh, using the the uh, the BGA, uh, which is uh, this is, uh, 192 chip, this uh, uh, board design, and we also test the design with uh, a chip resistor with uh, several different sizes, uh, with uh, 1206, 0806, and uh, 0804, and also 0603. They are the one used for the uh, for the solder joint uh, reliability check, uh, and it was tested at uh, minus 40 to 125 degrees C, uh, cycling condition. Uh, and uh, another thing we check is uh, the solder joint reliability against the drop fader. Uh, this is a drop test we we have uh, adopted. Uh, this is uh, basically a modified version of Motora uh, drop test. Over here, uh, you have uh, one of those BGA assembled onto the test coupon, which is then put onto this uh, uh, this uh, post uh, uh, through the hole, and then you have the top of the, uh, the distributor of the stress placed on top of that, look like this. This is basically the stress distributor, uh, so it allows any shock onto, onto this metal block can be dispersed Disperse the two this board uh, more evenly, and then a steel board uh, was dropped onto this uh, back of this uh, the carrier. Uh, it continued on uh, the one time drop, two time drop, or the many time drop until eventually this BGA uh, drop off from this uh, board, and then the number of the drop is uh, recorded to compare which sort of material is more resistant against this kind of drop impact. Uh, uh, here's the result. When the test condition was set at about uh, uh, 44 gram of the weight on the steel ball, uh, for the bismuth tin solder, uh, depending on the containing <laughs> silver or not, uh, uh, it will survive the 18 drop or the 27 drops. Uh, so yes. that's not very bad. It's uh, okay, got a 17 or the 27 drop. But for the dual fuse solder joint, 
We tested after more than 2,000 drops, still no, nothing failed yet. We stopped the testing <coughs> at the beyond 2,000 drops because we consider about uh, uh, any of the portable device which can survive 2,000 drops is good enough. Yeah. Uh, so this is the difference between the, the dual fuse and the shock resistance compared with the bismuth tin solder. It's more than 100 times uh, better than the bismuth tin solder system. Uh, when we're looking into the rupture surface, uh, yeah, this is uh, the sex solder. Uh, we can see uh, when sex solder is uh, tested against the drop uh, shock. As uh, you can see, it's more like the brittle failure as the pad interface is very flat. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, bismuth tin solder. Uh, you can see some of those containing the uh, bismuth tin solder and also together with the copper tin intermetallic, as we have shown earlier, the, the, the rupture surface morphology. So this is uh, the thing uh, basically showing you how the how the sac and uh, also bismuth tin solder looks after the rupture at the brittle failure. And uh, then we look into dual fuse. This is a mixed powder system. Uh, the failure mode depending on the process temperature. At the lower process temperature, like the peak temperature, at uh, 200 degrees, 200 degrees C of this uh, uh, solder. Uh, uh, when the solder rupture, you can see it contains uh, some of those has a has a ductile failure. You still have uh, some solder remaining on the pad, or the part of the pad surface exposed, indicating. Here may have some of those brittle failure. So this is based on the results shown about how the how the the solder itself uh, looks uh, uh, when after it's ruptured. Uh, so it's very much is uh, on the ductile solder failure side. But if the solder is a, a process at a higher temperature, 210 degrees C. Then we see the failure mode is moving toward the brittle failure. It, we can see we have a fairly flat uh, pad surface, uh, which is, uh, basically is an indication about this failure is a brittle failure instead of a ductile failure over here. And this is a uh, detail of the, the failure uh, surface structure, including copper tin metallics. Uh, and uh, this is actually depending on the on the uh, uh, reflow, reflow temperature, and also the also the the, the time of the the wear time at this peak temperature. With a different the wear time, the failure can further shift toward the the more uh, brittle failure side. So this is uh, basically comparing the uh, dual fuse uh, solder joint when it was tested on the drop test. The solder, the device was processed at a three temperature, 200 degrees C, 205, and 210 degrees C. With a three different wear time, uh, the, the reflow profile was a plateau, uh, flat plateau profile like this. Uh, some of those with a shorter uh, plateau, and some of those with a longer plateau. Uh, so all those are the, all the plateau shape. Uh, so we, when we check uh, the reflow temperature, in general, the higher temperature gives the more drop number compared with the low process temperature. And the number two is that when you increase the, the, the wear time on the plateau, uh, it actually increases the drop number. And uh, this is true for 200 degrees C and 205 degrees C. Uh, but it is not true for 210 degrees C. At 210 degrees C, actually we see the opposite trend. This increasing uh, the wear time at a, at a, a peak temperature, it actually causing the decrease in the in the drop number. The front lower temperature side, uh, the drop number increase with the increasing temperature and also increasing the wear time it was attributed to the better homogeneity of the solder joint. <clears throat> and that allow have a more integrity of the solder. But at a temperature at a 210 degrees C, uh, now 
And basically, the intermetallic compound formation become significant. Uh, therefore, start to reach the limit of the ductility. For the increase in the, the world time uh, at the peak temperature, action causing um, more of the IMC formation at the interface. Therefore, causing that uh, more brittle, this is why the drop number start to decrease at this 210 degrees C. We have five more minutes, Ning Cheng. Okay. Um, and uh, this is uh, the uh, dual fuse uh, compared the the mixed powder approach versus the homogeneous uh, powder. Uh, 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 homogeneous solid joint. This is a mixed one size of sac and another size of dual fuse. Uh, this one has a lower drop number compared with the both sides of the dual fuse. The both sides of dual fuse after form solid joints like this is homogeneous. And uh, this one after from solid joint, you have uh, uh, heterogeneity, some of sac get into the uh, dura fuse, therefore make it a less uh, uh, uniform. This is basically why this type of solid joint, the drop number is not as good as this uniform, homogeneous solid joint. Uh, this is uh, the uh, BGA, uh, as the, the, the TCT, time to second condition. Uh, the TCT is a minus 40 to 125 degrees C. The result basically shows about the two, uh, 230 degrees C uh, reflow temperature on the dual fuse is uh, better than the sex 305, which is better than the lower temperature, about 210 or 205 degrees C. And uh, this is uh, on the ENIC. Uh, the previous one was on the OSP. OSP. On the ENIC, it's uh, somewhat similar with uh, <clears throat> 230 degrees C is uh, best on the variability. Uh, on, at the lower temperature, basically, the lower the temperature, the lower the heterogeneity, the homogeneity, and the lower the time to second variability on this. And how about the LGA? Uh, the previous was on the uh, BGA. The LGA is basically showing you about uh, uh, for the dual fuel solder, uh, which is uh, all uh, uniform, only on the dual fuel alloy, uh, it's not sensitive to the temperature, and uh, both of those are much better than the bismuth tin solder on the durability. Uh, this uh, resistor, uh, chip resistor on the, uh, the shear, shear strength after the potential second treatment. Uh, this this treatment we check the strength about how well they, they survive this uh, temperature cycling. After three thousand cycles, it very much indicates about uh, well, sex solder is roughly uh, better than the dual fuse solder, uh, even though not much better. And the profile have a very minute effect on the dual fuse, uh, uh, the shear strength or the the durability of the solder joint. Uh, as a conclusion, the dual fuse has been developed, uh, which is mixed powder of uh, tin, enium, silver, and the sac. It can be reflowed below 210 degrees C and uh, with a plateau uh, profile. And uh, this, uh, after they form the solder, uh, solder bomb, solder joint, the melt solid, solid, solid temperature is higher than 185 degrees C. Uh, this kind of alloy is a good, uh, enable the hierarchy design, allow the sac to be used on one side, and also allow the, allow the, the molding uh, process. Uh, this allows a complicated uh, device design, uh, such as the 5G application. The low reflow temperature allowed is less than 210 degrees C, uh, so the sac will not remelt, and uh, the molding temperature uh, can survive uh, 170 degrees C uh, on the molding temperature. Uh, this is uh, if uh, the molding is uh, is uh, desired on the design. If a molding is not uh, not intended, no problem. The low temperature solder it can have a shock mm -hmm. resistance more than 100 times of the bismuth tin solder, and roughly comparable with the sac solder. And the reliability is roughly 70 percent of the sex 305. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, very good explanation.
presentation. Okay, any question from the audience? You mentioned here a majority of crack occurred at the bottom pad of the PCB. So, uh, yeah. Uh, no, this uh, this diagram basically means that the solder joint of uh, this BGA is a combination of the bore alloy and the solder paste alloy. So you have the paste alloy over here and the bore alloy list over here. Uh, this basically is a mapping about what kind of combination has a better shock resistance and what kind of have a poor resistance. For all those at the very bottom, they fail on the first drop uh, are the, all the bismuth tin solder containing uh, uh, solder joint. This is what it means here. Okay, so it is uh, all bismuth uh, solder paste is uh, close to PCB side, right? Uh, solder paste is always on the PCB side. Yeah. On okay. the bore itself is uh, is uh, uh, is of course on the BGA side, and uh, so it doesn't really matter. The bismuth tin solder is uh, on the bore only. Uh, that means towards the chip side, or on the on the paste only, not on the bore side, or combination both. As long as you have uh, any side as a bismuth tin solder, it doesn't survive not not even one drop. Okay. So for this LTS, uh, uh, any pattern for this location of the crack? It's more, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, Actually, this one is already adopted in the iPhone <laughs> and uh, new new generation manufacturing uh, because of superior drop shock resistance. The pattern is pending uh, right now. We are actually uh, already uh, already filed the pattern actually. Uh, so this is this is one thing already uh, in 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 our uh, in our uh, uh, process condition. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. If not, uh, thanks, Doctor Ninton. Uh, uh, we go thank to you very the much. next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank, you. thank you.